Thank you, Bishop Dixon, and thank you for taking care of my family. Just about everybody in here is part of my family, spiritually. Um, so many of you have touched my life in the most profound and auspicious ways, none more importantly than Mother Portis, who's in heaven, as we all know. Every time I fly back from Oklahoma to talk to San Diego, I have to fly over the cemetery near my 93-year-old aunt's home, near my godmother's house, where now Rodney lives. And I always wonder who I'm coming to eulogize or kiss. When I finish this, I'll run over to see Mike Lilac. Of course, he's here with me. Uh, David, TikTok. We used to make fun of his name. She'd say so proud, TikTok, where's TikTok? And he'd come and give a little speech, say something. Flo, I just want to take you home with me. So sweet, I love you so much, Michael. You done grown up, so I got so tall. And of course, Carol's not here today, but we feel like family. We rode together in those raggedy, crooked station wagons. No quarter to have go there, man. 10,000 other children. And <laughs> The wagon looked like it was riding down sideways. It wasn't going that straight. Something was always wrong with the tire or battery or wheel. And some of the deacons would help her correct it. The little raggedy, hopeless dresses. Glorine didn't like them long dresses down, down below the knee. Mother Porter wouldn't, Mother Porter wouldn't allow anything left. All of her daughters had to look like district missionaries. <laughs> State mamas and stuff. But the rich, I was standing before 250,000 Ghanaians with well, Oral Roberts a few years ago. And there were, there were that many in the stadium, another, they tell us, another quarter of a million outside the stadium. And I thought about Mother Portis the first time I preached with it, with it, Blake's chapel named after Mother Blake, Bishop Blake's mother. Uh, and I was scared. I wrote my, my, my message out. I said, all right, I'll sing a song like the saints always do, testify, pray. And then I'll read my text. I could barely read it, I was about five. I had to make it up. And then I wrote out my opening statement. And, uh, and then I start my little message. Well, I had about 20 minutes and I was through it all of it in five. <laughs> I was so scared to preach, you know, but that's, that's the, the moment that thrust me into the yes of God. To the ministry later on, Dad Sherman came out of the audience at Jackson and pulled when I was 14 years old and pulled me up on the platform. So this is where you belong, son. Not down there. And that's when I said yes to the broader. And then Bishop uh, Blake uh, licensed me right after that. But my, I have 10 million thoughts uh, today. This is very moving for me in so many ways. In the Book of Jeremiah, he. It is recorded that God said, before I formed you, Sister right. Jacqueline, your mother's womb, I knew you. That's a very powerful and intimate statement. I knew you. That's a covenant statement. It's a statement of agreement. Before you were formed, before you were formed, you were formless, skinless, sinless, yep. nameless, yep. and endless. I called you. I think when God knew us in our pre-incarnate consciousness, we said yes to this journey we call life. I think we all agreed to come here. I think we made a covenant with God. I believe Mother Portis made a covenant with God when God knew her before she had formed. And she touched all these lives. The presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ was taught, Charles E. Blake was taught by this woman. When I stood before those men, I've never been in any place in the world, and I've been all across this planet. Mother Portis is always by my side. Her fingerprints are all over me like they're all over you. This is an ordained expression of God on this planet. We sit in this room today, people touched by a special anointing that came to her life. To all you sweet saints, I want to kiss every one of you, Mother Featherson, I see Mother Watkins, who came into Koji because of Mother Portis. The room is full of people who can talk about her life. But because she said yes, 
We said yes. Death is an opulent and extravagant, sometimes arrogant illusion. We think we have something to cry about. You know, we're weeping, we're weeping. I wept today and I'll weep some more. But not because Mother Portis is gone, but because, and not just because I love Mother Portis, but I love the aspect of myself that I experienced when I was with her. When I stand before a crowd and look for her face, she always had that big smile on her face. David got to go see her for something. He brought his wife and children to church, Sunday school, and he said, he had his mom on his spirit, my mother, my mother, had to go see his mother, so he goes to see his mother, drops the children, his wife off, and goes to the, to the rest home to see his mother. They had a few exchanges, a few smiles, she didn't speak. She was close to heaven then, I think she was waiting for him, and her spirit called him in there, that yes. So he goes to kiss his mother, hug his mother, say a word of prayer. By the time he gets back to church, he gets the call. His mother went to heaven. She was just waiting for him. And when you went, you took all of us with you, David. We all said goodbye to Mother Portis. Today we're doing it in the formal way. But because she said yes, we said yes. I'm touched by her life. We're here by agreement. Let's sing together. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will. 